That's, that's the desire of God. And it always has been. You know, it's easy for us to, uh, I think sometimes religiously we have a way of kind of separating the Old Testament and the New Testament in terms of the way God is. God's the same. He wanted to love people and give them His grace and His mercy. Read the Psalms. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Jesus wasn't some aberration. He was an exact representation of God. And uh, man, this is the God Amen. who not only created us, but gave us birth, spiritual birth, that we might be His sons and daughters. Amen. To reign, to rule and to reign with Him forever. Praise the Lord. Give Him a hand tonight. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. you. May be seated. Thank you, Tim. Great job as always. Thank you, Suzanne and Jody. Praise the Lord. Good job. Amen. Hallelujah. I felt the presence of the Lord. Amen. Not that it would have made any difference if I didn't. He'd have still been here. Praise the Lord. But it's nice. Amen. To be able to experience that. Praise God. God is good. And I'm glad we got a couple of blondes here tonight. Amen. Because I. I got a story to tell you. How many of y'all, you know, you drive around town, you know, and you see these city crews and stuff, and it's, it's true out in the country, too, because you got county and stuff. In fact, they circle a hole on the, on the street just down from my house uh, as you turn off of one black top and you go back up into the housing area, and then you turn left to go to my place. Well, right before you turn, there's a hole. There's a pothole there. It's been there for, I think, three or four years. Every year they circle it. They put orange they paint around it, but they never do anything with it. I tell Sally every it's about time for him to circle that hole again, isn't it? I've been dodging it for, I don't know, four or five years now. Anyway, you know, you drive up, you see the crews are working. There's one guy digging a hole, and there's three of them standing there talking back and forth, looking at the cell phone, you know, and whatever. Yeah. And uh, praise the Lord. So, two blonde girls were working for a city uh, public works department. One would dig a hole, and the other would follow behind her and fill the hole in. They worked up one side of the street and then down the other. Then they moved on to the next street, working furiously all day without rest. One girl digging a hole, the other girl filling in the hole. An onlooker was amazed at their hard work but couldn't understand what they were doing. So he asked the hole digger, I'm impressed by the effort you two are putting into your work, but I don't get it. Why do you dig a hole only to have your partner follow behind and fill it up again? The hole digger wiped her brow and sighed, well, I suppose it probably looks odd because we normally have three pe a three-person team, but today the girl who plants the trees called in sick. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So, next time you're watching the crew work, by just pause for a minute because there's probably a reason for the way they're why they're doing what they're doing. Amen. Okay. Well, God bless you all. Appreciate you being here tonight. <laughs> And uh, we're going to get in right into this. As always on Wednesday, we try to be as brief as possible. Everybody's got work and things they have to do with, uh, the next day, and so we try to be respectful of that. But we want to honor the Lord and, and His Word as well. Praise the Lord. So beginning tonight, I'd like to, Suzanne, I'd like to start with Psalms 100 and verse 5. Psalms 100 and verse 5. Praise the Lord. I appreciate all the... Tim was saying and uh, the songs that you sung because they just so tie in with what uh, I feel like the Lord wanted me to speak to you about tonight. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, yes. and His truth endureth to all generations. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's kind of just another way of saying God is good, and He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever He says, He cannot lie. Amen. Right. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. All right, now I want to read Psalms 136. It's a whole psalm. It's, uh, it's not that long. I think it's 12, 14 verses, whatever it is. But anyway, I'm going to read the whole chapter, Psalms 136. Because it's, in fact, you could read 137. It goes on and on. I mean, it, is, it, it, just, it, it just, it's like trying to get it into our heads, okay? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for His mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him who alone doeth great wonders, for His mercy endureth forever. 
To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endureth forever. And made Israel, and his mercy, and Israel's best admits for it, for his mercy endureth forever. I know it gets to be redundant here, but it's important. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord. I think we ought to be getting the idea now that God's mercy endureth forever. It's just exactly what Tim said. Does he give second chances? His mercy endureth forever. Amen. When, when Jesus was asked, how many, do I, how many times do I have to forgive somebody? He said 70 times 7. I preached about this a month or two back. He wasn't giving them a figure. He wasn't saying 490 times. He was saying it never ends. Yeah. Now, if Jesus would ask us to forgive yeah. forever without end, it's because that's the way he is. Yes. He's not asking us to do something he isn't about that he doesn't do. And he came to reveal the reality of God, yes. the truth of God, his nature. Amen. So he is the God who saves. He's the God who heals. Yes. Amen. He's the God who blesses. He came to give us life yes. and that more abundantly. Praise the Lord. The God of abundance, yes. the God of more than enough, yes. more of everything, more grace, more, yes. more forgiveness, more mercy. Amen. It isn't just stuff. Although he wants us to have abundance in this life, he wants us to understand that he is an abundant God. Yes. He overflows with love. He overflows with yes. grace. He overflows yes. with mercy. It never ends with him. Yes. It's continuous. Amen. And we think because I screwed up last week, I'm in trouble. No, his mercy endureth forever. And that love should guide us, should help us, amen, to walk in a path. You know, Sometimes people get all freaked out. They say, well, you know, you preach grace and then everybody just goes crazy. Look, it's just like you have a kid that's, that's, that's been in a house where it's been very strict. Amen? Where, I mean, you, everything he, they do is just zeroed in on and critiqued and everything. Then that kid goes away to college. Ooh, Nelly. And they just kind of go nuts. Right? Now, I'm not naming anybody here. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. But little by little, that child will come back, amen, to the way they were raised. I'm not talking about being strict and, and critique, critical, but the truths that are established, that child will eventually settle into. Grace is the same way. Most of us have been in fear of God, at least partially that way, and then all of a sudden we find out He's more than that. He loves us. He, he, he's not going to be angry if we fail. The tendency is, like in anything else, to get a little squirrely. <laughs> Pardon the... Yeah. But eventually, we, we realize, look, it isn't about me doing everything perfectly right. So I don't have to prove this. I don't have to test the limits anymore. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to go see how far I can go before I get smacked. Because there's no limit. Right. Pretty soon you settle down into this relationship yes. with God that's about love. Yes. And you're not trying to take advantage of the situation. You're just embracing that love and that goodness and that mercy. And I'll, I'll just add this, that a lot of the things that we have declared to be sin, we're not sin in the first place. We're just attitudes, praise the Lord. But I'm saying it's not unusual when people first are, are given freedom to get a little stupid. Amen? Until they really realize what that freedom is all about. Right. And then they begin to embrace it for its reality, for its truth. Amen? Right. Look at James 1.17. James 1.17. He's the Satan yesterday, today, and forever, right? Every good and perfect gift comes from above. 
It comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Every good thing, every right. perfect thing right. is from above, and it comes from the Father of lights, right. whom, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Right. Amen? So it's not like the old saying, you know, if every, everything's coming to you, doesn't mean you're in the wrong lane. Sure. It means you're right smack in the center of God's love. Praise the Lord. Yep. He will not change. Right. He is love. Yes. He is good. Yes. His mercy endureth forever. I mean, you could go on reading Psalms 137 and on and on, and you'll see it just it's just a continuous. David got a revelation. Yep. And David was a screw-up like most of us. And yet he knew he kept experiencing the goodness of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God. Amen. Psalms 145, verses 8 and 9. Psalms 145, verses 8 and 9. See, he came to give us liberty, freedom. He came to set the captives free. Yes. What were we captive to? Yeah. Well, we were captive to religion. And we were cap first of all, we were captive to all of the bondages right. of, the, of the flesh. Yeah. Then... We come to church, and then we give up some, and we end up in bondage to religion, trying to keep all the rules and all the regulations, amen, when He came to set us free. He came to bring us into a love relationship, amen, where there isn't constant critiquing and judging, and, and you know, it, it's not even reciprocal. He just loves us when we are unlovable, and when we don't even know how to love back. You know, it takes a while. If a person has been abused and rejected and never really experienced unrequited love, or, or I shouldn't say not unrequited love, but uh, when all the only kind of love they've ever had is the love that has demands placed on it. It's hard for them to be in a relationship where it's just free love, where it's just love, that person just loves you, and you don't have to do anything to earn it. Amen? And that's, where we, that's, what, that's what's so difficult about this relationship we have with God. Because we're always trying to put limits on it. We're always trying to figure out, okay, what do I owe for this? You know, what do I got to do now? And you don't do anything. He can't help himself. Amen? We all ought to have that t-shirt Tim was talking about. He was showing off. Amen? He was, he was just showing, this is my spoiled one. I just want to spoil him. I just can't help myself. Amen? The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. Praise the Lord. Good to you, good to me. Full of compassion. Compassion for you, compassion for me. Amen? If I was the only one, I'd be getting compassion. I'd be getting mercy. He looks at each one of us as His only child. The way we try to be with our own children. They're all different, but we love them. You know, we, we, we love them in different ways. It isn't that we love one more than another. It's just we love them in different ways because of their pers unique personalities. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We love them completely. Yeah. Amen? And that's what God is saying about us. Matthew 14, 14. Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and He healed their sick. This is that God that David was talking about. Now he's in flesh, right? He saw this multitude and he was moved with compassion. And he healed the sick that were among them. Amen? Mark 1.41. These are just a few, but I'm just throwing them out here just so we have a basis here. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. Compassion. Full of compassion. Mercy endures forever. Mark 6 and verse 34. Jesus, when He came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And He began to teach them many things. Listen, this is Jesus that's dwelling in us. That we are one with. Yes. Amen. We don't have to make this stuff up. This is Him. He's trying to say, this is who you're dealing with. Amen? Praise the Lord. He began to teach them many things. All right, Matthew 20, verse 30 through 34. 
Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, was moved with compassion. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Jesus stood still, called them, and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? And they say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be open. So Jesus had compassion on them, touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. So he's compassionate about you. Yes. He can't help it. I mean, he can't help it. This is him. He's not making a decision to be compassionate from time to time. He just is. Amen? That's who he is. That's who he is, and that's who he is in every situation. Yes. Amen? Situations don't define him. He defines the situation. That's right. Amen? The word compassion is also translated mercy. Look at Mark 10, verse 46 uh, through 52. So compassion is also translated mercy. They came to Jericho, and he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Never begged again. Threw away the thing that identified him as a beggar, the beggar's garment, you know. He never had to beg from that moment forward. Have compassion. Have mercy on me. Same word. Here's what I'm saying. Compassion heals. So again, this is what Tim was talking about this morning. Nobody ever told this guy they believed in him. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever had compassion on the guy. And what happens when compassion is given? Healing takes place. In this case, it was a blindness, but it could be a heart. It could be a wound from childhood. It could be right. any number of things. This is who we are. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's why we are moved with compassion when we see the guy alongside the street because we're thinking, it could be me. Right? Just a guy that's having a tough time. A guy who probably doesn't know Jesus. A guy who's never experienced a lot of compassion or a lot of mercy. Amen? We think, well, yeah, com you know, compassion heals. And, and we believe that Bartimaeus believed it. And he was healed, right? And then we think, yeah, but I failed. You know, I screwed up so many times. And I've I, I, you know, hardly a day goes by that I don't come short in some area. Amen? But who hasn't? If they're being honest with you. Right. Stop counting. And just say, have mercy on me. Have compassion on me. And then start thanking him for it. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is exactly yes. what we've been talking about since we got here. I believe it's the Lord trying to get us to understand. Just... Believe in His compassion. Believe in His mercy and just yes. praise Him. Just thank Him and love Him. Amen. Yes, Lord. Start thanking Him for His goodness. Yes. Take it. Yes. Take it. Yes. It's yours. Jesus paid for it. Yes. It belongs to you now. Yes. It's part of your inheritance. Yes. You say, well, what about faith? What is it? I mean, simply put... Faith is taking an honest person at their word. Yeah. If you know somebody and they're honest, I was talking to my, one of my grandsons. He's like six years old. He's a little devil sometimes. <laughs> Not a real devil, but you know, like a human. <laughs> Acts up. Well, he took some stuff from school. I don't know what it was. Just nothing. I mean, it didn't amount to anything. It wasn't like valuable stuff. But just something he shouldn't have taken. He didn't have a right to take it. Well, his mother... You're taking it back tomorrow, and you're going to take it to your teacher and tell her exactly what you did. So he's telling me about it. They went to the house yesterday. 
And I said, Clint, you don't, you, you don't steal. I don't care how big or how small. You just don't do it. People will never trust you again. People always question, can you be trusted? Well, that's what we're talking about here. Faith, to have faith in somebody is to trust them, is to believe that what they say, they will do. Right? right. Faith is just taking an honest person at their word. Yes. And when you do, your feelings don't matter. Yeah. Amen? No, they don't matter one way or another. Amen? That person said it was done, yes. and I believe it. Yes. Right? Now, we're talking about people here, but people can lie, and they can be put in difficult situations where they might be tempted to lie or, or kind of twist the situation. But what if they couldn't lie? What if it was impossible for them to lie? All you got to do is believe in that person then. That's all faith is. Faith is simply believing in God. Believing that what God said, He will do. And God has to do what He said because He can't lie. It's impossible for Him to lie. Amen? This is God's Word. If you read it in here, it's the truth and it has to be the reality. Because God can't lie. And this is what He said. This is His spoken word written down. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. His truth. Praise the Lord. I mean, think, it's that simple. Just find something in here and go, okay, praise the Lord. God said it. It's a fact. I believe it. His mercy endures forever. Amen. His compassions fail not. So even though I may not feel like I qualified, it doesn't matter. He said it. And if I receive it, it's mine. He can't lie. Praise the Lord. All right. Hebrews 11, 11. This is just a perfect example. We know Sarah wasn't perfect. I won't even get into it, but you know what happened here. She gives her maid to, yeah. to her husband to have a baby yeah. after God told him they were going to have a baby. Yeah. She didn't believe, right? She came short. She tried to figure out a human way of, of manipulating the circumstance to make something happen right. that hadn't happened according to what God had said, right? Yeah. We always get in trouble doing that. But through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. And was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Now the beauty of this is, when you read this story in the Old Testament, you see that she messed it up. But God doesn't record that. What he records is she's faithful. Yay. Think about our life. What's recorded in heaven, what's in the mind of God about us, we believe. We are faithful. Yes. We are the righteous. Yes. Amen? Because that's what God has declared us to be. Yes. And because that's what He's declared, it has to be. It can't be anything other than that. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. So when there's a record here, you read the, the, all of Hebrews 11, and you read it, you, you read it, and you think, oh, wait a minute. Now, He tried this little gimmick, and it didn't work, and now God is saying, no, oh, He's faithful. He believed God. God counted His righteousness. Yes. But when you read the story in the Old Testament, you see they were screwing up. But God only identifies with how He has declared them to be. Yeah. Abraham is righteous because yes. he believed me. Yes. And that's all that's recorded of Abraham. Yes. I promise people think, well, I get to heaven, you know, and there'll be, you know, going to be some issues because of this deal. No! As far as heaven's concerned, you're going to be as perfect as Jesus Christ when you yes. walk in there. Amen. Praise God. That's good news for me. Praise God. All right. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is faithful and just or righteous. To forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He doesn't wait for you to feel good about it. Now, here's the deal. We, our sins were forgiven in Christ. Past, present, and future. Because of the, the old story, and it's true though, is that when Jesus was crucified, all of my sins were future. 
see what I'm saying? So it was past, present, future. Here's the deal. It doesn't matter how I feel about my failure. What matters is what God said about it. So my feelings have nothing to do with it. It goes to what Jody was saying. Who's ruling? The Spirit, who is perfect and righteous and holy. Amen. Or the soul, who isn't totally renewed sometimes to the truth of God's Word. Is the man of the house deceived? You see, what that's, that's what she was talking about. Or do we really believe what God has said? Who we are? What we are. If see, if we believe, talk about freedom, talk about liberty, talk about the ability then to love others and to have compassion for others and to have mercy for others. Because unless you feel loved, it's hard to give love. It'll always be twisted. Unless you feel total forgiveness, it's hard to forgive. You struggle with it because you think they owe me a little something here. Amen. He is faithful and just. Praise the Lord. He doesn't wait until you feel right about it. He doesn't wait until, you, you know, everything's, okay, I feel good now. I'm feeling like, ooh, I'm feeling it. Praise the Lord. No. The moment you believe, when you get your mind right, that's what repentance is. It's simply, you know, changing your mind. The moment that happens, yes. it's done. Yes. Praise the Lord. He doesn't, the minute you believe it. Yes. Praise God. Remember our feelings don't matter one way or another. They're not a part of the equation. His compassion for you, His mercy for you, it enduring mercy. Amen. And it demands that we be made whole. Yes. Praise the Lord. Spirit, soul, body, financially, and every area that Jesus suffered and paid the price. We are His family. Amen. Jesus and us have the same Father. We have the same name. Amen. All these things belong to the entire family. Yes. Praise the Lord. And we're not manipulating God to get Him. His mercy endures forever. His compassions fail not. Amen. He wants us to have them. He paid for us to have them. All we have to do is believe that what He says is true. Believe that He's an honest man that cannot lie. That's all faith is. It don't, you don't have to conjure up all kinds of feelings about it. You just got to make a decision. Yep. He's never lied. Nope. Will never lie. Cannot lie. I nope. think you can believe this guy. Yep. I think you can put some confidence in whatever he yep. says. Yep. Praise the Lord. Yes. All right, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. Ephesians 3, 14 through 20. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, which is what I just said, right? Yeah. That He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love, yes. may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Listen to what he said. This is one of the scriptures I confess every day, every morning. It's one of the first things I do. We are not, we, we are rooted and grounded in love. Why? Because we are rooted and grounded in God who is love. We are one with God. Praise the Lord. Compassion and mercy is what the cross is all about. His compassion and mercy for you. Yes. His love for you. The only thing that limits God is our capacity to receive it. To believe it. Our challenge is to take the goodness of God, the compassion of Jesus, and receive it so that we can dispense it to somebody else. Yes. Blessed to be a blessing. God wants us blessed to be yes. the blessing. Amen. We are agents of God's love. Yes. Agents of healing. I mean, read the Scripture. That's what He's telling us. The believers, they, they'll lay hands on the sick. Mm -hmm. They'll cast out devils. Mm -hmm. Agents of prosperity. Agents of wholeness. Yes. Agents of mercy. Agents 
of compassion. Receive the mercy. Amen. Receive the compassion. Yes. Believe the love. Yes. Receive the love. And be a blessing. Yes. Praise the Lord. Colossians 2, 6 through 10. And we'll wrap it up here. Colossians 2, verses 6 through 10. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. How'd you receive him? By love, by grace. Amen. Walk in that then. You don't, you don't receive it this way and then become a religious nut. You receive it and you live it out of that reality. You live your life that way. You share your life with other people that way. Rooted and built up in Him, which is what we also just read in Ephesians. We are rooted in love. We're rooted in God. Established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Receive the, the, the forgiveness, receive the mercy, receive the compassion, and thank God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Beware lest any man spoil you through yeah. philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of yeah. men, yeah. after the rudiments of the world, and yeah. not after Christ. Right. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Yes. Praise the Lord. And you are complete in Him. Yes. What does complete mean? It means it's done. It's finished. There's nothing else you can do. Amen? Which is the head of all principality and power. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen? Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for His mercy endureth forever. Praise God. His truth endureth to all generations. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Amen, amen. We ought to be the happiest people. We ought to be the most joyful people. We, we ought to be the most positive people. I mean, how can you not be knowing what we know? If He is for you, who can be against you? If you've got all this going for you, what is there to fear? Who is there to fear? Amen? His mercy, His compassion endureth forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. That's, that's an asset. That's an asset that money cannot purchase. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's peace. It's joy. Amen. He came, the scripture talks about us having peace, love, joy in the Holy Ghost. In the Christ that's in us. Amen. Without this, we don't have it. Without this, we don't have peace. We don't have joy. Right. We have anxiety. We have stress. Yeah. We have fear. We have self continual self-evaluation. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's psychotic, I'll just tell you right now. That's, that's why we have psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. Because of this constant self-evaluation. Right. Yeah. When God has already determined that we are righteous, yes. holy, perfect and pure I don't need no stinking psychiatrist I can be crazy for Jesus hallelujah <laughs> praise the Lord it's all good in him amen give the Lord another hand praise God amen God bless all of you amen keep an eye on those road crews tell me what you think hallelujah you're dismissed in Jesus name